Yeah. I wanted to um, post a video about story. Lately, I've been um, a lot more into the craft of screenwriting. When you screenwrite, you take all the elements of story, which are the basic elements of what somebody needs in communication, whether through things they're seeing, hearing, in words, in actions. You're taking the basic elements and going through an arc. You're using those forms of communication, and then it's on a medium. It's either painted on a canvas or in a film. It's, um, it's shown on the screen in a story. It's heard through the auditory complex. But at some point in time, you can distill it down to there are certain things that need to be communicated, and there's an arc that it inevitably seems to go through in order to have an impact in the other. The other being the listener, the one that doesn't know the story yet, the one that they, if it's a well-written story, a well-executed story, feel like they're in the story. They feel like they are a bystander in that world. And the mirror neurons in the head, they cause us to go through physiological, energetic, emotional, even hormonal changes due to what we're watching there on the screen or listening to or witnessing on the canvas. You can tell a story in a lot of ways. But interestingly enough, as I'm reading things like Ubuntu, Sacred Economics by Charles Eisenstein, watching everything I can on central banking, money, what is it? It's so easy when we focus primarily on the trickery, on the deception and the deceit that is definitely happening in banking, in money, in economies, in the world, that to apply the label of banking to bad or money to evil is denying yourself a magician, denying yourself the ability to co-create in this world. Something doesn't have to mean something else. You actually can endow it with new meaning. But people don't all just listen because you have a new idea. They won't change the story in the game just because you have a new idea. It's got to be so profound. And it's also got to have kind of what marketing says. It takes 7 to 11 touches before an advertisement has the proper emotional and intellectual effect for somebody to make a purchase because they have to feel confident. There's a feeling they have to have that you through the art of marketing are introducing into them. The reason why I'm saying this is because if we were to change the money of story, it would have to be such a good story, such a new invention that it has to blow apart the confines of the previous one. So when we think of money, Money, not to others, but to everybody, all the individuals, must become a part of a larger story that we can't unsee, that you don't want to not dance to. Which means money has to be imbued with artistic meaning like story. And in fact, it is. Now, you can look at the numbers and it looks very rigid and it seems to behave exactly like numbers do, like math does. But an interesting thing about it is that to get most people interested in math, they need it to make some kind of lateral sense to another part of their brain. Like, make this make sense to me. Otherwise it's dry. Otherwise I don't know what I feel about it. And it's above the science of it, the story that you add to a story of money. It's that art that you add on to that, that layer on top that really makes it stick inside of people. It makes people want to not obey like it's a rule, but in the same way that you would dance to music. You're obeying it to a certain extent. You're playing along with it. You're adding yourself to it. You are liberated because of it. And a lot of people have said this about capitalism, a lot of people say it about socialism and communism and these economic models.
but that gets into governance and that in the brain is lateral so you have the math of it and then you have the politics of it the economy of it and the social element of it about how power governs itself when we look at the world and all of humanity as one single species then we stop just assigning blame to one group like the bankers or the this or the that we stop zeroing in on it and what we do is we see it dancing and we acknowledge it's turning over something we don't deny the conspirators of time of ages of agenda we don't deny that they exist we simply have to add the question mark when it's what label do we give to it that's the art that's the meaning what are we going to socially agree that this means so i do see how conspiracy theorists can get lost in no it's them and we should bring them to justice and that is understandable and in a way that's also somehow inevitable but if we don't look at it in the terms of punishing the abusers but understand that conflict is necessary for a story to land conflict is necessary i've even heard conspiracy theorists say i wonder if all these conspiracies are to get us to wake up to our own power I wonder if these conspiracies are to get us to step into something that we believe in, put skin in the game where the consequences are real, somewhere, somewhere in life. Add your you-ness, your uniqueness into the game. Create your own story. I've been hung up on that one, on the money one. I've been hung up on the looking at it like facts and figures and inflow and outflow and not that those mechanics don't work. Ask anyone who's gone to screenwriting school, when they follow the formula, that does not mean the end product is going to be a good story. Well told. Cuz it's not just good enough for a good story, as my screenwriting teacher said. He said it has to be a good story well told. There is a difference when you're playing the guitar and singing between executing the song properly and playing it well you can hit all the notes you can hit all of those notes with the voice with the guitar you can make it spot on you can even give it a little swagger so it doesn't sound too robotic but at the end of the day there's an x factor there's this feel and if it doesn't have the feel you miss the point the soul is gone I'll end with this. Rudolf Steiner in Anthroposophy says that there is an aramonic force and a luciferic force. Aramon is the more rigid, structured, contracting, calculating, cold, Saturnian kind of god. And Lucifer seems to be this expansive, openness, seductive, but also has its dark and uh, sinister aspects to it. that these two opposing forces are like dragons one white one black one yin one yang and they're always fighting they're always at war biting each other's tails spitting fire at one another but beneath all those little iterances of events and fighting tactics and moves you come to see that neither vanquished the other they're both immortal and perhaps they're not fighting it's a dance see the conspiracy theorists that i also agree that i must be among in to some degree on some level the conspiracy theorists look for the pattern and try and diagnose the solution to what they perceive to be the problem But if you were to realize as in Lethal Weapon there was this one scene where Officer Riggs the main character Mel Gibson tackled this man as he was mugging a woman what he should do right he didn't realize it was a story they were filming a movie the conspiracy theorists may not realize and I'm typecasting conspiracy theorists because I also get this way It's a way of looking at the world. It's not just beliefs you hold. It's a way you funnel your perception. When you look at 
problems, you need a solution. And in math, it's interesting because there's a problem over here. On the other side of the equal sign is the solution. It's a mathematical equation. It's a specific calculation. That doesn't seem to be how life works. But that's just me. That could be my bias. It is something that I'm riffing on currently. And I personally feel that as I'm understanding what money is, I can use the language of it because it is a mathematical way to tell a story. How much do you believe in it? Put skin in the game. I've been looking at where should I invest the little bit of money I have to invest. And in many ways, I'm measuring myself to other people who have invested and I'm listening to other people that I measure in certain ways. And I believe or I don't believe who's telling the best story. I don't believe anyone has told the best story yet. And I believe the best story is coming very soon. I do believe there's a global reset on its way. It's going to be monetary. It's going to be many things. I just don't believe that we don't get a say in the matter. And I think we're convinced that we need to bark our vote up very specific channels set aside by a very few sectors. But not all of them are traps. The art direction. Understanding it's a story. So it's not just about diagnosing the problem. It's how do you tell the story, the solution, or the, the greatest ending, the twist ending that just blows your mind and you realize, holy shit, I'm in this movie too. I don't believe it's just one person who tells that story. And I think it would be the most feasible if everyone believed in it due to their own accord. I think that story is present. But I think back to my time touring in 2012 around Europe. And it was on Woten on the Edge is the place in England that I was speaking. And there was this guy beforehand, he was an older gentleman. He was just telling you how to start a story and giving a little bit of help at the very beginning. Here's what you do when I'm done. You take it, you fill in the blanks, and then you give it away, and you give it away, and you give it away until it becomes our story, no one person's story. And in a way, that's what communism supposes. In a different way, that's what capitalism supposes. In many ways, that's what all things could be. I don't think the solution can ever be vanquished. I think it's right in front of us. But I think we're going to war too much and we're not simply singing the song. We're not telling the story. That's what I hope we can do in the coming days, months, years. I think it'll take a while, but I think it's inevitable. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening.